We are now at the very formal part of this ceremony, because today it is our honor to confer two honorary doctorates, one to the School of Business and Economics and one to the school, honored by the school, uh, by the Faculty of Psychology. The Board of Deans of Maastricht University, at the recommendation of its faculties and after consultation with the University Council, has decided to first of all award an honorary doctorate to Professor Catherine Shaw. And we will now watch a movie about Professor Shaw. Catherine Shaw is a celebrated scholar and an exemplary teacher who serves the greater public good with her profound academic knowledge. She is the Ernest C. Arbuckle Professor of Economics at the Graduate School of Business at Stanford University, was a Senate-confirmed member of President Clinton's Council of Economic Advisers, and received the Columbia University Award for her work on international business. In her work, Shaw addresses important human resource and personnel questions, seeking answers through the combination of economic theory, insider econometrics, and management practices. Shaw has contributed vastly to the understanding of why competing organizations either adopt or refrain from adopting specific productivity-enhancing practices. Professor Catherine Shaw is recognized as a world leader in putting the right questions on the agenda and finding answers in the best ways possible. An important topic where Professor Catherine Shaw's work and the aspirations of Maastricht University and the School of Business and Economics coincide is the role and the importance of entrepreneurship and innovation in society. Catherine Shaw examined and showed that fostering entrepreneurship is particularly worthwhile. Nurturing entrepreneurship, especially in an environment in which we can learn systematically from entrepreneurial expertise and failures, lowers the risk of failure in new ventures. I am truly grateful to serve as the promoter of Catherine Shaw as honorary doctor at Maastricht University. May I, in may I invite Professor Catherine Shaw and Professor Gerard Van, whom the Board of Deans has appointed as her supervisor. Please come forward. Please. So let me tell, tell you something more about Catherine Shaw's work. Together with Anne Bartel and Casey Ignyowski, she made new discoveries using a novel research method, which they called insider econometrics. Insider refers to the use of rich macro, micro data on workers or groups of workers, inside firms. Insider also refers to the use obtained from meetings with managers and workers who help to inform almost every aspect of their research. Econometric signals that the analysis uses rigorous statistical techniques. These techniques estimate the effects of management practices and productivity. They can distinguish empirically between competing theoretical models and they uncover why firms adopt specific management practices. The method Insider Econometrics combines theoretical knowledge and prediction, statistical inference, and insights from business owners and workers. It's precisely this combination that is ideal to reveal when and why management practices truly matter. Professor Shaw's work with Ed Lazier, her colleague from Stanford Business School on Personnel Economics, have bridged the gap between labor economics usually taught at economics departments and human resource management taught as part of the business administration classes. But fully aware of the adagio of the famous British economist Alfred Marshall, that it's not the economist business to tell the brewer how to brew beer, their interactions with business students and practitioners, Shaw and, Liz and Lazier have paved the road to use the scientific tools from economics and behavioral sciences to understand, teach, guide, and enhance human resource practices. An entrepreneur 
is the owner of a new business. A serial entrepreneur is someone who opens businesses repeatedly. Catherine Shaw's work with Francine Lafontaine on serial entrepreneurship shows that in all establishment that started between 1990 and 2011 to sell retail goods and services in the state of Texas, more than a quarter of those businesses are led by serial entrepreneurs. Serial entrepreneurs also run firms that are more successful. Prior experience from business creation increases the longevity of the next enterprise. Past entrepreneurial experience is instructive. It enhances valuable business skills. She combines her stellar research agenda with excellent educational abilities and exemplary academic citizenship. She has received multiple awards for her teaching excellence and has been research panel member of the National Science Foundation, served as the head of the Department of Industrial Management, and has been the editor of academic journals such as the Review of Economics and Statistics and the Journal of Labor Economics. Dear Catherine, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to confer upon you this honorary doctorate. The exchanges during this morning's mini-conference, mini yesterday's Women at SBE lunch, and your contribution to the reopening of the Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation have been inspiring. We are happy to work with you and look forward to our future cooperation. By the authority vested in me by law, and in conformity with the decision of the Board of Deans, I hereby confer upon you, Professor Shaw, the degree of Dr. Honoris Causa, and all the rights deriving therefrom by law and tradition. As evidence of this, I present to you the degree certificate, signed by the Rector, the Dean, and myself, and affixed with the great seal of the University. And I put on your shoulders the kappa, which signifies the honor bestowed upon you. Take it away, you, you, you'll get it, eh? but because uh, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> it's so big. Yeah. I would now like to give the floor to our honorary doctorate to address our audience. Please. Or okay, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm just going to use my remote. Okay. Um, well, this is amazing. I've never seen anything like it before. And, you know, I'm always a little cold, so it's warm, too. <laughs> but it, it does, you know, this whole um, event you know, is a very warm and lovely event. And, you know, I'm certainly amazed that you would have the ability to, in the, the, to choose to hold it in this amazing setting. I, to some, I mean, I, when I walked in, I felt like maybe I should suggest we all raise and ha sing a hymn. And I am going to come back to that point, to be honest. Um, but first, I, I, in all seriousness, I, I really want to thank Gerard so very much. This is uh, emotional for me, and, and Rector Rihanna, and, and all of you for being here. It, you know, it's uh, obviously you know very meaningful event in my life, and uh, so I, I want to thank you all very much. Um, so, um, but I, <laughs> I, I am uh, a teacher in, uh, uh, of business students and uh, MBAs at Stanford. And in order to convince them that every now and then they learn, need to learn um, a few analytical models or maybe even a small amount of math, 
I have to frame it in stories. So I've learned to be a storyteller. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to tell a few stories that are of a, a personal nature, um, but to reach a general conclusion and point here. And so um, the first is actually about my children, and I, I hope they're not going to see this video, though. I had no idea that I was going to have a video, but thank you so much for producing that. Um, but anyway, because what I want to say, so I have three kids in their 20s. And the, um, the first two, uh, my son, he, he got a Stanford undergraduate degree, so that was cool. And, uh, and then he went and got a consulting job, and that was cool too. Like, ah, you're going to support yourself. Um, and then, about a year or two into it, he promptly quit. And you know what he did next? He went to the Columbia School of Journalism and got a journalism degree. Now, I'm an economist. Journalism is not an industry that's thriving. And so I was a little bit uncomfortable with this journalism degree. But we parents nowadays don't criticize. And then my second son turned, to have, it turned out to have a skill, which is he is excellent at mountain biking. So he spent five years winning record after record um, you know, in California uh, for mountain biking racing. And I thought, hmm, OK. So the message my children seem to have gotten is follow your passion. Don't worry about supporting yourself, but follow your passion. So I had to reflect on that. So I'm going to come back to this in a minute. Um, so yes, um, we, we are um, uh, you know, studying entrepreneurship, and we are teaching entrepreneurship. And so let me say a few things that are going to now turn to a reflection on my years in this job. And so um, one thing we know about entrepreneurship, so we saw a series of, of great papers this morning. It was a lovely conference. One thing we know is that entrepreneurs um, often come from families of entrepreneurs. So they are imprinted, in a sense, by or they learn to be entrepreneurs. And so at my age, I have to look back a bit and think, well, what imprinted me? You know, why did I end up here? And um, it's, it's really not a very big stretch of my imagination to figure this out. Um, so let me look at, so my dad, um, he was a machinist in a very small machine shop. And so, as you know, I'm an economist. And so first of all, one thing he decided to teach me was a little economics. And so when I wanted to go and have a job, and you know, I think I was 13 years old, he thought, no deal, because the gasoline is going to take you to drive to your job, let alone you're borrowing your mom's car, which she values, is not worth the pay you're going to earn there. So a little cost-benefit analysis, which was unpleasant. Now, economics has been updated. So we think about the utility. The utility would have been getting out of my parents' house. So it would have offset the cost. However, that was one economics. Then the other thing he loved to do is visit businesses and watch them make things. So we would drive to see the pea soup factory, which you can still do in California. We'd go down the hill and see Anheuser-Busch. And, and then we'd see a car plant. And so what enabled us through his, the era partly, now you can see it all on TV, but that era was we would take family vacations to go uh, look inside companies. And so what did you just learn about what I do for a living now? That's what I do for a living, um, which is, you know, Gerard talked about this, uh, this I, I guess you talked about steel mills. I mean, you talked about the nature of the work. And so a few years into being an assistant professor, I thought, hmm, I am just, you know, and here, I don't know much about sports, but in, in the U.S., they'd say, this is, I'm not going to hit a home run. 
doing what I'm doing. In other words, the nature of the research I was doing. And so I thought, all right, time to do something else. And so a little money came my way, and I grabbed my friend, and we started visiting steel mills all over. You know, we, so we would go inside, and we had only one objective. We wanted to figure out, because we were in a business school, why some steel mills perform well and some don't. And this is also an era of declining steel. Um, so we wanted to figure that out. But we had an endpoint, but we had absolutely no idea how we were going to get there. We were just driving around, flying around. So over time, we figured it out, and you know, we wrote a paper, and we wrote some more papers, and we did more work of that nature. But my point is, back to the entrepreneurship point, you know, we were just taking risks. And to, to really do well in research, you've got to take risks. And so I teach entrepreneurship to business students. And one time, I made the mistake of telling them I was an entrepreneur. They thought that was hilarious. Um, but we are. I mean, all of us, we have to be entrepreneurs because we have to think, that's where I want to go. How am I going to get there? I'm going to take some chances, try different things. That's entrepreneurship. Well, there's another element to entrepreneurship, and that is you got to be persistent, which I only mentioned my dad, but my mom was persistence and never lower your standards, you know? And so that's another element for entrepreneurship. You know, it, it, it can't just be a passing hobby. It, you really have to persist. So what I think we all do as academic entrepreneurs is we don't just take chances, we persist. So in essence, you know, I, I'm quite sure I'm right about <laughs> us as entrepreneurs, but there's actually another thing or way I think about um, what we do for a living, and it is the following. Um, well, this might be embarrassing to Eddie Lazier, but you mentioned him, so I'll raise it. So, um, Professor Lazier um, is a beautiful writer. He writes articles where you just get it, you know? And so, he's a beautiful writer. He's also a beautiful presenter. And so, quite some time ago, I had to in introduce him in an academic setting, and I thought, what do I think of him? What I think of him is beauty. And to me, beauty is great art. And so let me um, actually mention an, an artist that is dear to my heart, which is um, some of you have probably heard of villain, villain I, uh, I can't say it, <laughs> villain, Dutch American artist, villain de Koning. Yes, anyway. So some of you have heard, I mean, he left when he was a teenager. So maybe you've heard of him more because of the enormous amount of money his paintings sell for. But I love art and painting. And when I look at his work, I think it is a work of beauty. But you don't really know how he pulled it off. It's like magic. He titles a painting woman. And you look, well, where's the woman? Until you finally just get absorbed in the beauty of the work itself. And then there's other times where art, artistry is completely representational. You know, it's a Rembrandt. You see what the purpose is. But I just want to sort of conclude right now by saying that I think we're also most successful when we show this beauty to others and we bring them into our world. And it may be students. It may be fellow academics. But I think, you know, often, you know, it takes that little, you know, little extra effort to put our work together in such a way that people feel some sense of awe. And for me, that's art. It could be something else for you. So why did I start with my kids in this thing about passion, you know, where I thought, eh, passion, you know, really, you got to earn a living. Because as I look back, I thought, well, guess what? That's what I did my whole life, is I followed my passion. I took on project after project. Some failed miserably, <laughs> and some succeeded. But that is really ultimately what we in here 
have been fortunate enough to do, and students want to do, follow their passion. But fortunately, you know, back to the beauty of this church, and, you know, it's that not everyone can do that, and we hope our students will follow their passion and be successful, and I think there is a sense of awe in here that we have been lucky enough to have a pretty secure life while also creating beauty and following our passion. And so on that note, I again want to thank you for this degree and, uh, and what, you know, what a beautiful ceremony. So thank you very much. Thank you, Rector Rihanna. <laughs>